Okay, thanks everyone for joining the Roseville Electric Utilities Roseville Advanced Homes Program. Um, this is for 2016 Title 24 um, projects in Roseville Territory. Uh, today um, I will be presenting. My name is Allison Whitwer and I work on the Roseville Advanced Homes Program as well as a few of um, TRC's other residential new construction programs <clears throat> in California and Joshua Hoster will also be presenting today. Um, if, I, if you haven't used GoToWebinar before, we have everyone muted except for Joshua and myself. Um, if you would like to ask a question, please type it in the questions portion of your GoToWebinar pop-up. This can be done at any time during the presentation, and um, we will interject throughout the presentation as questions come up. Um, and you can also feel free to hold any questions that are general to the end or ask them throughout. Um, and this presentation is being recorded, so we will send a link out to everyone who has registered following the presentation. Um, before we get in, I'd like to launch a quick poll for all of our attendees to see <clears throat> who is on the call. Um, so you should be able to see the poll now. Um, just select whether you are a builder, an energy consultant, HERS rater, architect, or utility representative. Okay, and I will close the poll now and share it. So it looks like the majority of our attendees are builders, um, and then we have some energy consultants and utility representatives. So thanks again, everyone, for joining. Um, today, our presenter is Joshua Hoffler. Josh is a technical reviewer for TRC's California Residential New Construction Program. Um, TRC does implement the program on behalf of Roseville Electric Utility. Um, all of your correspondences and enrollment communications will be with TRC, but the incentives and the design behind the program is REUs, Roseville Electric Utility. Okay, Joshua, I'll let you take it from here. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for attending today. And so we'll just go over a brief uh, agenda of uh, the information that we'll be presenting today. So first, I'll go over the program overview structure and the basic eligibility requirements. And then we'll take a look at the calculation methodology used um, for, the, uh, for the EDR scores, the energy de design rating scores and uh, a closer look at the base incentive structure and our measure list under the program. And then after, uh, after that, we'll have Allison go over the application, enrollment, and completion processes. So now looking at the program overview, uh, the Roseville Advanced Homes program is you know, for residential single family new construction. So. Uh, single family homes, duplexes, and townhomes, uh, looking at subdivisions permitted under the 2016 Title 24 uh, code. Uh, one of the main, or two of the main aspects of this program are, will be requiring uh, each lot to have positive uh, electric or kilowatt hour savings in the uh, modeled design. And also, we will be using the Delta EDR score, and so that's an energy design rating, and we'll look at that a bit closer um, in a couple slides here. And uh, so the goal of the program is to facilitate uh, energy efficiency design and construction in California, so above code construction. And uh, it's funded through ratepayer public benefit funds. So now the program, uh, here's a quick a uh, high level view of the program structure. So first we'll take a look at the eligibility requirements again, uh, a minimum entry Delta EDR of two and requiring a positive kilowatt hour savings on a lot by lot basis. Uh, and then we'll look at the base incentives. Uh, the incentives will start at $200 uh, per lot for an EDR of two and then increase to um, increase by $10 per 0.1 EDR increase and 
once you hit a EDR of six, this uh, incremental uh, base incentive increase uh, goes to $20 per 0 0.1 EDR increase. So uh, incentivizing uh, for going above and beyond even the baseline entry of the uh, program requirement. And then we'll take a look, a uh, closer look at the uh, bonus measures that we are offering cash bonuses for in the program. So program eligibility, again, um, the projects must be permitted under Title 24, 2016 code. Uh, the program will be operated on a lot by lot qualifying basis rather than requiring every plan or orientation to comply. Um, and uh, again, uh, we're requiring a positive electrical saving for each lot enrolled. Uh, and we have a, a graph here that shows how the in, uh, how the incentives are layered. So as you can see, program entry begins at a delta EDR of two, and the um, the uh, majority of the incentives are stacked onto a lot of these cash bonuses. And uh, you can see the inflection point for the uh, for the delta EDR increase happen at a delta EDR of six, where the uh, where the base incentive increases to twenty dollars per zero point one uh, increase in the delta EDR. So yeah, going more into the calculation methodology, we'll be using the delta EDR score is the difference between the standard efficiency energy design rating and the proposed energy design rating. Um, and there will be point kickers available in addition to the cash kickers. And so the point kickers can help achieve program entry. So the two point kickers we have, um, we'll take a look at when we go in, into more detail with the uh, incentive structure. Um, we currently use the Delta EDR for the 2016 CAP code as well. Um, and the main uh, concept here, uh, to understand EDR uh, compared to code compliance is that the EDR score includes unregulated loads while compliant code compliance calculations only look at regulated loads. So uh, here is a uh, an overview of some of those, uh, those load calculations. So uh, looking at compliance versus EDR calculation, we'll have uh, the compliance calculations, we'll be looking at space heating, space cooling, indoor air quality and uh, domestic or hot water heating. Uh, while the EDR score includes these regulated loads, it will also include uh, lighting, appliances, and plug loads into its calculation. <clears throat> and so uh, now I'll go over some more definitions for the energy design rating. The uh, EDR standard efficiency is the EDR of a home built using the prescriptive path in the 2016 uh, Title 24 code. And the EDR proposed efficiency is the EDR of the designed system not taking PV into account. There is an EDR value of proposed PV that looks at the PV and battery system by themselves. And then a final proposed EDR, which combines the designed home and the solar PV. The Delta EDR uses the difference between the standard and the proposed EDR plus the kickers. So uh, the Delta EDR does not take into account the PV systems. And so uh, here's a visual to show how the Delta EDR is calculated. Uh, as well as uh, comparing the Delta EDR scores to uh, code compliance scores. Uh, so for a, a reference, if you're used to dealing with code compliance numbers, uh, you'll see that uh, a Delta EDR of two is approximately six to 8% better than code. And uh, this, uh, this relationship scales pretty linearly up um, with a delta EDR of three and delta EDR of four, uh, as shown on the screen, uh, being 13% to 16% better than code. 
Uh, homes in climate zone 11 will likely need to perform envelope measures to achieve, achieve delta EDRs of two. So now getting into more detail with the uh, incentive structure, uh, have some of the numbers uh, laid out here. Uh, the entry is at a delta EDR of two and the base incentive starts at $200. Um, increasing $10 per 0 0.1 delta EDR increase. And this uh, increment increase occurs between a delta EDR of two and six. <clears throat> uh, and then increases once you hit a delta EDR score of six. Uh, and so, as I mentioned before, there are these point kickers and these point kickers can be used to uh, bring a project into uh, eligibility in the program, right? So if you had a lot that had a Delta EDR score of, uh, a Delta EDR without kickers of 1.2, and you were to implement both the 100% LED lighting kicker and the home energy management system kicker, uh, you would get an extra point added on. So the total would be 2.2. And so this would meet the minimum requirement under wrap um, and would have a $220 uh, base incentive. Hey, Josh, uh, we do have a question that came in. Great. Um, so on the slide, it says aligns with CAP. Um, can you elaborate a little further on that? as to whether a project that is enrolled in CAP can enroll in uh, the Roseville program. And uh, CAP is the California Advanced Homes Program with PG&E, just for those who may not know. Um, yeah, so the incentive structure is similar to CAP uh, in that, um, it, that it uses the Delta EDR score. I believe CAP starts at a 3.0 uh, entry and uh, one of the main big differences is um, while CAP does have a um, incentive increase for increasing Delta EDR scores, um, CAP rounds down to the nearest whole Delta EDR. Whereas in RAP, in the Roseville program, we will be uh, taking into account uh, tenths or 0 0.1 Delta EDR increments um, instead so that we capture more of those savings in the incentive uh, for the project. Uh, as for programs being able to enroll uh, that were through CAP, I believe this is a possibility. Um, so yes. Yep, I can confirm um, that that is, is possible. So if you do the project enrolled in CAP, um, if we do not reach out to you, feel free to, to reach out to us so we can move forward with enrolling your project in this program as well for your electric savings. Okay, you can move forward, Joshua. No other questions at this time. Great, so yeah, now we'll take a closer look at the uh, measure list, uh, the approved measures under the Roseville uh, Advanced Homes Program. Uh, first, we'll take a look at the envelope measures. So these are cash kickers. Um, for example, if you were to implement a high performance attic, uh, not only would this likely increase the Delta EDR score of the project, but there will also be a $300 per lot kicker added to this. Um, <clears throat> as you can see, this is like a lot larger than the, uh, the base, like the base entry incentive. Um, and uh, you know, if you remember the graph shown earlier, uh, a lot of the incentives for this program are layered into these cash kickers. And um, one of the great things about them is that they are straight up the, the cash, the base level of $300 for doing attics or high performance walls. But it, like I said earlier, it will also increase your Delta EDR score. So these, uh, these will increase the incentive on two fronts essentially. Uh, next uh, is a continuation of some envelope measures. So we will be looking at QII, 
as well as building air tightness. Building air tightness has a uh, scaled incentive. Uh, so it starts at $100 for four air changes per hour and increases up to $300 uh, as shown here uh, for uh, one air change per hour or better. Uh, next, we have the uh, HVAC and other measures under wrap. Uh, so while the whole house fan is a prescriptive measure, it's not yet widely adopted. So this is a, a measure being offered under the program. And uh, important note here is that the chosen equipment should be CEC approved. Um, we'll also be looking at buried ducts. However, uh, when taking the buried ducts option, we will be requiring uh, QII to go, or this requires QII uh, in order to uh, implement buried ducts. Um, and so because of this, uh, you would not qualify for the QII kicker. So uh, the QII kicker was $200. So the buried ducts is $300. Um, and so that's like essentially a $100 bonus over the QII bonus alone. So, uh, and then we'll also be incentivizing uh, balanced IAQ or HRV systems um, and smart thermostats. And another important note for the smart thermostats are uh, they're required to be Energy Star rated and also Wi Fi enabled. And if you take the 0 0.5 point, um, home energy management system kicker that will include the smart thermostat measure um, under it. And so uh, you would not receive the $50 incentive if you take the point kicker for home energy management system, similar to how buried ducks require the QII. Um, if it requires another measure, then that measure has been wrapped into uh, into the kicker bonus already. And then uh, finally, we'll be looking at an all energy star appliance kicker for $100. Um, and the important uh, note for this one is that it is looking for appliances if installed um, with the lot. So uh, with bathroom fans being the required installed appliance. Um, and so these appliances uh, include refrigerators, bath fans, dishwashers, and washers and dryers. All right. We do have another question. All right, great. Um, so the California Advanced Homes Program and this program look to have similar kickers or bonuses. Um, will a project that's enrolled in both programs be eligible for the bonuses in both programs? Uh, yes, they will be eligible for both kickers, I believe. Okay, so how does that work? Will they get the full bonus amount um, from each program or will it be uh, prorated where each utility pays a percentage of that bonus to get them to the full amount? Let's see if I can. Um, I can answer that. Um, it, it will be prorated, so each utility will pay the percentage of the electric or gas savings for each measure. So you will get the full amount. Um, you just won't get it twice from each utility. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. No other questions right now. All right. Great. Um, so now. I'll pass it back to Allison and she'll go over the application process for the Roseville program. Thank you. Yeah, thanks Josh. Um, so my role on this program is to um, enroll projects in the program. Um, I will work with you guys as you apply and get your application packages together. Um, it will be myself or, or a colleague. Um, so to apply for the program, the first step you should take is creating your Title 24 documentation. That's your energy model and then the CF1R, which is the compliance report that comes from your energy model. And when you do this, you want to design your project to have a Delta EDR score of two or higher so that you qualify for the program. 
Um, if during this stage you're having trouble getting to a Delta EDR score of two or higher, um, one of the benefits of enrolling in this program is free design assistance that comes from the TRC team. So um, we're happy to get involved early on in your, in your design stage to help you um, incorporate measures that will uh, get the project to qualify for the program. Um, so you can reach out to us at that time if um, some design assistance is needed. And if you do not need design assistance, you can contact your TRC representative next. Um, you can reach out to our email at rnc at trccompanies.com to get that process started, and then someone will follow up with you. Um, our toll-free number is another option, which um, is displayed on the, on the ending slide if you want to jot that down when we end the presentation. Um, after you get in touch with someone, they will send you the application if you don't already have it, along with the checklist of additional documentation that is needed to review your project and reserve the incentives. Um, and I'll go through each of those items next. And then uh, once you have your application and all the documentation together, um, you can submit the completed application package to TRC, and then we will move forward. Um, so here is a close-up of the application. Um, I'll go through the fields just so that um, you know what each of them what information needs to go into each one if you have not filled out a program application before. Um, the first section is the payee information section. So um, builder company name should go under the applicant or payee name. Um, your federal tax ID will go into that box. And this information should match what shows on your W-9 form, which is a part of the documentation we must receive in order to enroll your project. Um, this is required for the incentive to go through RU and make their way to you. Um, the payee address also should match the W-9 form. Um, for project information, your project name will go there. Um, if you are already participating in or plan to participate in PG&E's California Advanced Homes Program, you'll select that box. Um, just keep in mind that the entry level for the California Advanced Homes Program through PG&E is a Delta EDR of three. So if you are at two, um, you would not be eligible for CAP, but you can still enroll in RAP and get um, incentives for your electric savings on your project. Uh, then you'll enter your project address and location. Um, it can be one of the model home lot sites or any of the lots on the project. We just need to confirm that the address matches um, what we have on file for, for the project site. And then um, you'll put in project contact will be the builder name. This is someone who needs to receive uh, email communications throughout the process of the project and the program. So they'll get the enrollment package, they'll get the um, incentive notifications and things like that. Um, permitting agency will be where you apply for your permit. Permit date can be when you expect to receive your permit or when you applied for it and so your building permit. Uh, start date, you can put your estimated or actual on when you begin construction on the project. And then uh, also enter your estimated completion date. And that date will be when you expect the entire project to complete construction. Um, and it, it can be an estimate, as we know, things, things get delayed or held up. So no problem if, if that is a rough estimate. Um, the HERS provider is the registry that your energy consultant and HERS rater will load your project into. So that's either CalCERTs or CHEERS. Um, HERS company name will go next, and your HERS rater contact name and their email address. Um, we can grab your energy consultant's information from your Title 24 documentation. That's why that's on the field there. We try to keep this form as uh, simple as possible so that you're not spending a lot of time doing paperwork for this program. Um, you'll then select your housing type production homes, meaning uh, more than one on the site. Um, and then total number of plan types. So this is how many energy models you have. So if you have a like plan one, two, and three, but plan one has two options, each of those options is considered a separate plan for the program. So just keep that in mind. Um, total number of homes on the site, uh, whether you are going to receive propane, and whether it is an all-electric project, 
um, in which case you would not be selecting that box and the pg and &E cat box because pg and &E would be providing gas. Um, and then we do have the number of units to com units or lots to complete in 20 or by year there so that we can get an idea of how many homes you'll be requesting incentives for each year. Um, so that's why that is broken out that way. Um, next is the application documentation. So uh, this is the, the other materials we need in order to enroll your project. You already need to have these for the other parts of your project development. These are not things that are unique to the project other than your W-9 form. Um, sorry, not project, not unique to the program. So all you need to do in addition to what you're already doing is your application and your W-9 form. Um, so the construction plans are what we need. The, those are also known as architectural plans. Um, we need your energy model and CF1R uh, for each plan. So there will commonly be multiples of those. Um, a list of lots and addresses. So this tells us the address of each home that you're enrolling in the program. Um, we need the lot number, the street number and name, and the orientation of each address if it is known at enrollment. Um, this is because some orientations may not qualify for the program on a plan, but we don't want to uh, disqualify any homes being built to a qualifying orientation. So that's why that's required on that list. Um, we need a site plan with a north arrow. This is also to help us confirm that the orientation listed is correct when we go to pay your incentives. Um, your W-9 form, as I, I explained earlier, that must match what you list in the payee information on the application. And then we need access to your project in the HERS registry. So that's CalCERTs or CHEERS. Um, so going through the enrollment process, um, once your application package is complete, we will send your project to our review team. At that point, incentives will be reserved after the review is complete, and we will send you your acceptance package. In your acceptance package, there will be your official enrollment letter your incentive request form, which you will use when you're ready to request payment. Um, the plan check verification summary sheet, this shows all of your energy efficiency, um, technical details, and then your uh, utility incentive summary. So that shows what the incentives are for each plan that has enrolled. Um, and we'll also send you back a list of your enrolled homes. So that will be each address that we have enrolled in the project or in the program. Um, after enrollment, you will continue with construction. Um, you only need to reach out to us if you have made any changes to your project that affect the energy efficiency of it. Um, but otherwise, uh, once you're done with construction, you will request your final incentive. And I'll go into more details on those last two steps next, um, actually after this slide. So um, we do have a 2013 code program for projects in Roseville Electric Utility uh, territory. And if you did enroll in that program before for a 2013 code project, and you now have lots that are being built to the 2016 code, you can apply for what's called a rollover. It's called a rollover because we're rolling those lots from one code into the other code program. Um, if it is applicable to you, reach out to one of us. We will confirm eligibility on your updated um, lots under the new code and then we can um, get those enrolled in this program. Um, so regarding design changes, if any changes happen that affect the energy efficiency, you must report them to us prior to requesting your incentive payment. Um, if you don't report them to us before doing so, um, it's something that we will catch in the HERS registry. So at that point, we would then go through this process. But um, it's easier to just get ahead of that than you're not waiting for your incentive payment um, longer than necessary once your homes are complete with construction. Um, so changes that are necessary to report to us would include adding plans that homes that are enrolled are being built to that were not already enrolled when you applied for the program. Um, changes to plans such as adding QII, uh, building air leakage updates, any other bonuses that you decided to take advantage of after enrollment, those can be reported to us. And um, if you decide to add lots to the project, so if you enrolled with 30 lots and you got approved to add another um, stage to the project and you have more homes to enroll under this code, then you would report those to us. Um, and the documentation that we need that would accompany 
any of these changes, um, we, can, we can explain to you after you communicate to us that you have a change to report. So you would contact one of us. Um, if you're already enrolled, which you would be in this case, um, you can just reply to your um, acceptance package email if you'd like. Um, and then we will work on, on approving that adjustment and getting you through the adjustment application process. Um, so once you are done with construction, um, you can request your incentive. This is a screenshot of the payment request form. Um, so if you have a, a project with 100 lots and you complete them in stages of 10 or 20, um, you can submit for your payment as you move through construction. I would recommend doing so um, in groups of 10 if you can, just because it's less forms for you to fill out. Um, so this is what you'll fill in. You'll enter your your payment information, um, project name, uh, a project number will be assigned to you when you enroll and that will be included on your acceptance package. So you can note that there. Um, we can also look it up easily. And then you'll, you'll enter the lot information. So the lot ID, the lot address, the street name and number, um, which plan the lot was built to and the orientation. And then we will fill in the incentive amount. Don't, no need for you guys to fill that in. Um, and then sign it and return it to us. You can send that to rnc at trccompanies.com. Um, uh, before filling out this form though, you should confirm that your HERS rater has uploaded their verification form to the HERS registry. Um, that is what we check in order to process your incentive request form. So if you send us your form and that's not done yet, uh, your, your incentive request form will move to the bottom of the line because we'll have to follow up with you to have that done and it just delays your incentive payment. So um, always good to have that done before sending your form to us. Um, okay, so that's the presentation. Let me go and see if we have any questions that came in. Um, looks like we do. Just a moment. Okay, quite a few questions. Um, so for the high performance fenestration requirement, it says it doesn't include or doesn't affect doors. Does this include French doors and sliding glass doors? Um, HPF only doesn't include. So the French doors and sliding doors are not going to be um, required to have the U factor rating. So they are excluded from the HPF requirement. Thanks, Myra. Yeah. Um, Myra is our, our project manager. We did not introduce her previously, but she, she works on this program and will be one of your contacts if you need to speak with the program manager. Yeah. Um, another question, when do you expect to have this program rolled out for the 2019 code? This is Myra again. Um, so we are working with Roseville. Um, I'm not sure if Mark with Roseville is on this uh, webinar, but we are working with them. We're in conversations about getting uh, a 2019 program going. Um, so if we do get something, you can expect to see that um, maybe sometime in the fall. Okay. Thank you. Um, is the intent to offset the expense of the upgrade. There doesn't appear to be an incentive that will be a net positive. So the goal of the, so the is to you know, help yeah, us. Um, and while none of the uh, cash kickers will uh, necessarily cover the full cost. Uh, the goal is to help facilitate and uh, reduce some of those costs associated with building above code. And then also, in addition to those cash incentives, as I uh, mentioned earlier, the uh, you know, measures such as uh, high performance addicts, uh, not only will they have you know, the $300 cash kicker associated with them, but they'll also um, likely increase the Delta EDR score, uh, thereby increasing the base incentive. So yeah, the goal is to uh, help facilitate and offset some of those costs. 
Yeah, and also prepare builders for the upcoming code. Yes. Like it is, it is very near. Um, thanks for that question. Um, since the T Title 24 software only calculates orientation to the nearest 90 degrees, will orientations round to whatever 90 degree angle it is closest to? Um, I can say yes. Um, we understand that it's not always exactly uh, north, south, east, or west. So whichever one it is closest to is the one that we, we choose. We don't do southwest, northwest. Um, we stick to the four cardinal directions. Okay, next question. Um, it looks like one of our energy consultants believes that French and sliding doors are considered fenestration under the energy code. Um, okay, so for that, um, you're just exempt from the 0 0.2 0 0.24 high performance fenestration requirements. Okay, I don't see any other questions at this time. Um, I'll give everyone another minute or two. Um, so in the meantime, um, you can see here is our program website. The application can be downloaded there. Um, more information on the bonuses that are available are also included. And we should have the program handbook ready um, for you to download in the coming weeks. Um, for any uh, program inquiries and applications, our toll-free number is listed there, as well as our email address. Um, program managers are both Nick Dunphy and Myra Vega at TRC, and then the contact at Roseville Electric Utility is Mark Rippey. Um, thanks everyone for joining us. There's a three question survey that will pop up when I close this webinar, and the link will be sent out um, uh, later this week. Um, and yes, yes, so the, the webinar will be available on demand to view. Um, sorry, I'm having a few other questions come in, so hold on just a moment. Um, so, yeah, you can view the webinar online afterward. Um, okay, I think that that is everything. Um, if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to us, um, and we're happy to answer them, and we can also set up a meeting to speak with your team. Um, and just a note that complete applications must be submitted before December 31st, 2019 um, to enroll in this 2016 code program. Uh, that is because the 2019 energy code will roll out on January 1st of 2020. Okay, thanks everyone. Have a wonderful day and, and we'll see you next time.